so, so tell us a little about yourself. Uh, well, what's there to tell? I'm 20 years old. I have been playing tennis for most of my life, for almost 16 years now, which is kind of crazy to think about it. Uh, my life has revolved around traveling, playing tennis tournaments, trying to break into the top leagues in the world. Then I make rap music on the side. This was kind of unearthed during this pandemic. I've always liked rap, but I never really thought about making it myself. And then it just so happened that Gully Boy came out and inspired me to make one of my own. And then I kind of got good responses to that. So I started rapping and the rapping part kind of took off. And so now, I don't know, on the tennis circuit in India, I have this tennis rapper name, which is like a the guy who raps, which is a little weird because I never saw myself as a rapper. I don't really have that personality, but it's uh, it's fun. It's it's something that I'm passionate about. And yeah, pursuing, as I said, college degree as well, trying to get that because I have a family full of doctors. So I kind of got to keep my education going to you know, stay in the household. Let's let's keep it that way. <laughs> Don't get kicked out. No, I'm kidding. A supportive, supportive family. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I've been living abroad for the last four years, first three years in Ge- uh, in Spain, and now in Germany for the last year. Uh, kind of felt like I outgrew the tennis world in India, so I wanted to go out and get some international exposure. That also helps with some of the rap songs because I've met some interesting people while traveling who have helped with uh, with some of the songs that I created. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Nice, nice, good stuff. So, so you know Spanish and German? I know Spanish a good amount. German, I didn't even bother trying to learn. It just seemed too intense for me. The, the words were way too long. I couldn't pronounce anything, so I didn't even give it a shot. No, no, I think German is easier than Spanish. Really? I've learned both, but German is Spanish. You've yeah. learned both? But like a little bit. So and Spanish, you think I learned. Easier. Yeah, German is, it sounds a bit more harsher because, you know, it has yeah. the Hitler effect. No offense. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah. but, like, other than that, it's pretty, like, yes is just yeah and no is just nine. And then everything is so much streamlined and so straightforward. Spanish, you have so many different, you have three past tenses only. How do you even differentiate? So, it's, it's, it's very... I personally like German better. I think you're confusing him with basic Spanish. That you know. <laughs> I mean, I honestly have never heard that Spanish is more difficult than German. The word permit in German is Meldeschienenbegungsgegenden or something like that. Permit. P-E-R-M-I-T. It took me like 20 minutes to learn that one word. <laughs> so anyway. That's, nice. that's a debate that's that could go on a while. I mean, personally, I never, you know, Try to dabble with such big words. I was fine with allowed, which is Durfin, and then I was, I was, I was fine with all these smaller versions of the words. These big words, not my game. Mm. Not my game. Got it. Yeah, it makes sense. Stick to the base. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're planning to move somewhere else next year, or now it's Germany for three years, then you relocate again. I'm not sure at the moment because uh, the training is really good in Germany. The life is pretty tough. It's in the middle of nowhere, the academy I train in. Uh, there's basically three tennis courts and a supermarket. So that's that's life in Germany right now. Um, so it's, yeah, it's social life, there's pretty much nothing there, which is why it's a little challenging, but then the tennis is really good. So it's kind of a debate on kind of how to move forward, but it's definitely a place I can see myself training and, 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 and being there long term. So I don't know how long it'll be, but it's I, I mean I'm I'm settled down there so a year two years maybe five I don't know at the moment but uh, nice. definitely a good a good uh, camp. Is it very different from Spain? Is yeah it's actually uh, like two worlds apart. Yeah so in the academy your social circle is it like other people who play tennis like how old are they are they your age older maybe younger? Yeah it ranges from like fifteen to. 24-ish, so I'm kind of smack in the middle of that, and oh, nice. yeah, it's basically only tennis. They're only tennis players staying there, training, who I who I interact with at the academy, and then when I go to tournaments, like, obviously it's only tennis players there. So a lot of tennis players, <laughs> to to sum up, <laughs> but but they're nice. Tennis players are nice people and like good values overall. Most of them. <laughs> How long do you train for? How long do I train for in a day? Yeah. Uh, it, Monday to Friday is basically full days, which is two tennis sessions each, about an hour and a half to two hours. 
give or take uh, about six hours in a day, including fitness and, and tennis. So, and what do you do for the other part of the day? It's kind of divided the timing. So it's in the morning and then in the afternoon. So the only free time is after five in the evening, which is when the rap kind of side, the, the, the free time for music comes into play. You then make some beats, try and write some lyrics. But uh, yeah, just have past time, have some fun, do some exams if I have. Which the last couple of weeks were all about exams. But otherwise, it's just it's mostly music and tennis. I think music scene in Spain is much better than in Germany. I mean, from what I have at least heard. The music, the pop scene in Spain is, is a lot better. There's a lot of that Latino reggae, that, that kind of, you know, Bad, yeah. Bad Bunny, is that his name? Yeah. Despacito, yeah, that yeah, kind of vibe is, is, from, is from Spain. I, I wasn't really into rap and stuff when I was living in Spain. This is more of a recent thing that I've started off. Oh, but nice. you're really good at it. Like, I've seen some of it. It's really, uh, really good. Work in progress, kind of a beginner in the game, but <laughs> just starting out. Nice. So, so what inspired you to go into rap? Like, so what? What was the first rap song you heard? Like, what was the first rap song you kind of? What was your jam? First, that was my jam. Was probably that "Lose Yourself" by Eminem. I think that's most people's first. That get, uh, gets them into, uh, gets them vibing with rap music, where you actually pop your head and stuff like that. But. Uh, <laughs> I think that was the one that hit me the most. So that I wanted to try and make something on the same lines of that, where somebody they listen to it and it actually like pumps them up. So that's kind of that's that's talent right there. Eminem is probably the greatest rapper in history. But I think that was the first one that I really jammed to. Then, like I said, after Gully Boy, I wanted to make one of my own because I kind of saw the process of making a rap song and how you know the whole. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, but if you haven't, then it's a uh-huh. must watch. It explains yeah how he kind of became a a rapper out of yeah. nowhere. So that inspired me to make the first song, and and it's 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 more just writing lyrics that's inspiring and fun for me. It's about making rhymes and making words. So I the first thought I was gonna do poetry, but I didn't feel like that would gel very well <laughs> with anybody. <laughs> Not a lot of people in the 21st century enjoy poetry, at least our generation. So I've, if I want to share it with some people, then it's got to be in the form of something that they like, which is, at least I thought it would be rap. Yeah, yeah. I think rap is the predominant genre right now. At least most people. Rap and hip-hop, everybody just vibes to. Like Definitely. You go to any club, any party, that's, that's, that's like it's, the vibe that they're going the, for over there. Definitely. Did you check out the Eminem album that dropped like, yesterday? They yeah, there was one that just came out. Part of music be murdered by. I, I listen to I listen to a few of the songs. He's he's kind of changed his vibe, but I still I still really like his songs. Yeah, the older yeah, one was like, better. Definitely. Like, the yeah. older Eminem is much better than the new. One. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say it, but now that you said it, I'm agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there's yeah. a rapper there's a rapper called Dax. I don't know if you guys have heard him, but definitely check him out. D A X. He's one, in my opinion, one of the best rappers in the world, up there with Eminem. But he's just doesn't have that same Fan base, but he's he's really good. If you guys like that, yeah, all right, all right, we'll check him out. Fair point, fair point. But you know, the, the thing with rap is it's now so intermingled with hip hop and to a certain extent even pop that it all just blurs out as to what is rap anymore and what is pop anymore. Like yeah. that makes sense. With a lot of auto tune and stuff, rappers have made their songs into more pop songs, so it's kind of Blending into one another. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, I don't blame. Like some auto tune songs actually sound really nice. Like, like. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, auto tune is only supposed to make the song sound better. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but it kind of ruins the vibe or the the lyricism that they were going for. I guess not the lyricism, but the delivery. I don't, I don't know how to put it. It makes it less natural. Yes, there you go, there you go, yes. It adds a little bit of that, it adds a bit of that mechanical vibe and sound effect to it. Yeah, I guess it's it's an acquired kind of feel to the song. Some people really like it, some people not a big fan. Fair point. Uh, So what do you think that the Grammys, they left out the weekend? (laughs) What was your views on that? 
I mean, the Grammys are like a bit out of. I I, I don't think people. The weekend is is a good artist. I don't know if it's justified that he wasn't part of. I mean, he, I, was he? I don't even think he was nominated. No, that's what the whole debate was about. No, he wasn't nominated for anything. That was so sad. Yeah. Nothing so, literally. Maybe he pissed off one of the judges. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So apparently, apparently he took a Super Bowl offer, like to perform at the Super Bowl. So that's why he can't. That's why he wasn't nominated. Apparently, oh. I don't. That that's what all these rumors and stuff. I don't know. But okay. yeah, maybe. I didn't read up enough on that. They're very sensitive. They'll get offended for anything. Right, but for the for sure, there's politics in in there as well. Hundred percent. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I think everybody lost hope from the Grammys when. They gave the best album to Cardi B instead of, you know, Astro World. I think that was that was the peak moment when everybody lost just hope from Grammys. They were like, no, they're not doing this. True. So, <laughs> Every decision they make, though, some people aren't gonna like it, and this one, unfortunately, more didn't like it than liked it. But yeah, exactly. Of, yeah. But I mean, every decision is controversial. But the Grammys just kind of have a consistency of making the wrong decision again and again. They make me feel good about my decisions. I'm <laughs> to say it. I'm the first one. <laughs> they make you feel good about your decisions. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's one way of looking at it. Yes. So, how many songs have you released so far? I released. I think it's it's four right now on. Uh, that's on Apple Music, Spotify, and stuff on all platforms. And then on my YouTube, I I think I have maybe seven or eight, which are other kinds of. Uh, they're not necessarily songs. They're songs, but not. I don't know how to put it. I can't put them out onto all platforms because they have copyright issues. Like I made one about um, one of my friends. His uh, his grandfather passed away because of COVID, and he texted me saying that can you write? I've written some words down. Can you make this into a rap song and spread it with people out there? Because uh, I want people to hear the story about how I screwed up because he went out with his friends and hung out, and that's where they suspect that he brought the virus home with him. Um, and he hung out with some friends who weren't wearing masks, and they were all together. And somebody asymptomatic would have given it to him, and he would have given it to his granddad, and his granddad passed away. Anyway, so I basically made uh, a song about that and put it on my YouTube channel. So stuff like that. It's not really a song song. It's more of a story that's being told through rap. But uh, that's. So I plan to do more stuff like that, stuff which actually have meaning, which which hit people, hopefully create some small impact here and there. Yeah. So, so do you plan to release an album soon? I I don't know about an album. An album is is a big dog rapper kind of vibe. I don't feel like I. It I takes think I think you're cut out for the big dog rapper kind oh, of vibe. I'm flattered, but then. I. But like, to someone that has heard it, like I have. I heard the mask on one um, because my sister was playing it one day, and um, it was really, really good. Like genuinely. Oh wow! Okay, thanks. I mean, it's it's <laughs> hard to hit it on the nail with in an album because you have what six, seven songs at the least. So yeah. And I don't know. Just each song would take a couple of weeks. It's like a whole year that goes into an album. So fair enough. I would I would say every time I create a song, I like to just get it done and and upload it and kind of move on to the next one so i'm more about the skills instead of the how many songs have you written to how many have I, i've actually written like 15 20 songs so i have a lot of lyrics on my phone i better not lose these notes <laughs> but there's a lot of lyrics it's really hard to like get a beat that goes with it change up the flows that kind of stuff so that that part takes a while for me, the lyrics kind of flow a lot, but then to actually make it into a song is the challenging part. So obviously, it would, it would help to have like a producer and that kind of cool stuff, you know, like a, a studio <laughs> which I go to. But I got my little laptop and my mic, so I'm making do with what I have. Um, so it takes a bit longer, but it's still fun and like you kind of enjoy the process a bit more of making yeah, it. Not bad. That, yeah. So can you get a freestyle? Oh, freestyle! <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, Wait, what? I don't think I've come prepared for this. All right, all right, fair enough. Fair enough. Can, can one of you beatbox? No, but I can play a beat. I'll play a beat. Hold on. <laughs> okay, yeah, wait, how about... I'll, 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 write, 
I'll write something about like about this conversation about the stuff that you guys are doing, and then I'll take a video and send it to you. So if you're making a video, you can add this into it. Yeah, that's that, that, that yeah. Well. Not very good at coming up with stuff on the spot. <laughs> no, 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 okay. no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It takes time for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, though. Thank you so much. Hey, thank God. you. What so what are you started? Uh, mm -hmm. How did this guy? How did this start? Like, how did this? Like, who initiated? Shivali, I'm guessing it was you. No, no. So actually, it was Akshat oh, wow. and Vedant that started. I I joined in as like someone who does design and editing work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I think we have because we both are talented. So we did you know talented people to come in and help us out with different things. So then Shivali helped us out with all the editing and all the videos that you see on our Instagram page and everything. Yeah. It's all her. Wow. And okay. How how do you guys know yeah. each other? We go to the same college. Like go as in currently. They're in the same yeah. college right now. Oh, yeah. which one is that? Currently we don't go. We just sit at home and attend. But right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we haven't even met each other yet. Yeah. We actually like don't like we haven't physically met each other. Are you serious? Yeah, we're all in our first year. So yeah. you just started. Which college is this? Jindal. Is it in Bangalore? Oh, no, that's Jindal. not Bangalore, is it? No, it's in Delhi. Uh, okay, I've heard of this. Oh, I think. Okay, I think one of my friends went there, but he's like 29 now. So, anyway, so you guys haven't met at all. So you enrolled, and then the pandemic, and boom, you're at home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're done with the semester. Yeah. In like two days, we'll be done with the semester. Wow, and you you had online exams, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. exactly have exam. They were assignments and. Yeah, we had like a test paper, which was also a group project kind of thing, because everyone did it together anyway. Yeah. Probably. So. Yeah, they they tried to make it, you know, very. You can't cheat. You can't do this. You can't do that. But. I mean. <laughs> I mean what do they expect? Who are they kidding? Yeah, it's just. It's just <laughs> And oh, yeah. like they gave us like ten days for a paper. Ten days for a paper, isn't that yeah. way too much time? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> no, see, it's not way too much time because we had other papers with it. Oh, okay. But like, it gives you more time for other people to do it and send you their papers. You can just paraphrase. Wow, yeah. But, but the still end it first. Last day. Huh? What was it? We still end up doing it on the last day, so it's okay. Oh yeah, obviously. I mean. We're we're Gen Z it's on the way. College life that you do it on the last day. You don't get that, you know, college student vibe going exactly. if you don't do it at the last. Day. If you don't procrastinate, are you even in college? Like <laughs> exactly, precisely. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not it's not an exam if you haven't stayed up the whole night doing it. Exactly. <laughs> That's the that way the Gen Z thinks these days. <laughs> it's sad, but it's true. Yeah. I'm guilty of it. I mean, are we really guilty, fair, though? <laughs> what? Sorry. Are we really guilty? Like, do we yeah. really feel bad about it? We shouldn't have to feel bad about it. No, I mean it's. Yeah, I mean everyone works better under pressure. Exactly. You have that pressure. Oh yeah, that's something also. Thought. We I'm get the work done. At the end of the day, what we finish what we have to do, the assignment. So isn't yes, that what matters more? Exactly. Exactly. That that's all that matters. Whenever you do it, however you do it, you could get it outsourced. Then as long as you've done it, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> outsourced, right? You could paraphrase. No, you can actually yeah. send your assignment to someone and they'll do it for you. I mean, that's like okay. Then you could feel a little guilty. I think. Yeah. <laughs> then you could definitely feel guilty, but because you haven't done much. Jawali, you should say that no general teacher watches this. Otherwise, they'll know your tactics. I don't get my assignments out, so I sit and do everything. <laughs> <laughs> she gives ideas to people. It's okay. And I write my own shit also. I don't even paraphrase it. So yeah, good to do it. We just hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually serious. I actually do my work on the last day. It's okay. What it happens good. in in Microsoft Teams stay in Microsoft Teams. So. <laughs> you don't have to lie to us. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, we believe you. They believe you. 
<laughs> so how have exams and assignments been for you? Like, have you got people from your class so you you know help you out? Like, do the assignments for you? Like, Shivaji. I, <laughs> I don't think I, you actually get people to do your exa- assignments. No, no I. Shivaji actually helps us for like with every exam. So. Yeah, you both bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh wait you're asking me if i use help with my assignments like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm not gonna get any help we have one more paper due <laughs> and i'm done with half of it i um, i never get any help i in fact don't know any of my classmates so that's kind of sad so i can't get oh. help yeah because i've never been to class i don't know who my classmates are i just know my class teacher and she just sends me stuff to do Okay, although I do get my dad to help me out. So I guess there, that's a bit of a... I mean, yeah. it's coming in from somewhere. We all get help. Yeah. So if it's not my dad, then it's probably Google. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, the help is coming in from somewhere. Are friends at the academy if they know? But do they all also go to college or they've taken like... They, they, they go to a school in Germany, the younger ones. The older ones haven't enrolled in any college. They're not big into education there for some reason. I mean, they just like finish high school and boom, we're done. Like, we don't. What's college? Fair enough, so, fair enough. As long as they're big in tennis, I don't think that education really matters after that. True. Yeah. yeah. But so at the same time, if they're not, yeah. focus that you can put on one thing, either education or tennis. Like, so if they're not, if they're completely discarding education, then in they're more focused into tennis, I guess you could say. I don't know. You Do they? could. I mean. Obviously, it adds a lot more pressure into your tennis if you're focused just on, you don't have any fallback. Yeah, you don't have any backup option and you're not really allowing yourself to get an education while playing tennis. So 90% of them, when they finish their match or they finish training, they go and just sit on their phones or watch Netflix, which is cool and stuff. Everybody needs their downtime and stuff like that. But if it's tennis and Netflix are your two priorities in life and that's the only thing you're doing, you're not allowing your mind to kind of gain knowledge, experiences, get an education in any way even if it's youtube videos and stuff like that so it's just it just seems like you have a lot of free time on the weekends especially why not get an education somewhere at least you learn something fair point fair point but why did you move to germany if you think the level of game was better in spain i mean i the level of the players overall in spain were better i think that on some level, yeah, hitting partners and stuff is important. But at the same time, I felt like the coaching wasn't suiting me so well in Spain. I'm not the kind of guy that's supposed that's going to play like Rafa. I don't stay 10 feet behind the baseline, moving left and right. Like I don't have the legs to do that for five hours on the court. I got to serve and I get to the net and finish the point as fast as I can. That's my game style. So a Spanish kind of coaching won't exactly work on me. So it, didn't really, it took me a lot of time to realize this. But when I finally realized it, I'm like, okay, you know, I got to kind of bounce and find some new solution here because this isn't working for me too many injuries my knees were getting destroyed i was just it was kind of a train wreck so basically i, I needed something that suited me and my game style more which is what worked out better in germany have you ever met nadal because you were in spain i had no so i was training at the rafa nadal academy which was in mallorca which is his academy and so the first week i went there i i met him because it was like the first week of the academy opening. And I didn't expect much from the academy because I'm like, okay, new place. They're probably still figuring, figuring some stuff out. But it turned out to be really good. And then like the second week I was there, I was practicing with him, which was kind of crazy. So, and I was obviously nervous and stuff like that. But that was pretty huge. And then I decided to stay there because I made friends with Uncle Tony, which is his coach and his uncle. And then basically things started working out. I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay here full time. And then I started practicing with him more often. Mainly because I feel like they didn't have anybody else there to practice with because <laughs> it was a new academy and stuff. But I'd like to feel that I gave him a good enough hit because, yeah, <laughs> I mean, he was sweating. So let's just say that I did a decent job. But yeah, he's like one of the most humble people that is. And like what they say about him, that he's so hardworking and he's really humble, that's all true. Like there's not a moment where you feel like, oh, that guy's like a little, his head is over his whatever. You know, he's, he's living in the stars. He thinks he's the best in the world. Nothing. You don't get that vibe from him. Have you met players that ever make? So any other tennis that? players you've met? I've seen a lot in the gyms of like French Open and stuff. I haven't personally spoken to a lot of them. Martina Hing 
Rodriguez, Ivo Karlovic, those kind of guys, but they're like outside the top 20. The top, the top 20 guys I've seen in gyms and stuff, but I've never personally spoken to. But yes, a lot of them are, a few of them are, let's just say, not <laughs> teddy bears. <laughs> But they're, they're, it's a competitive world, so I guess at the end of the day, you need to be, you know, strong. You need to be cocky, I guess. So it, it, I it, mean, it helps. I think yeah. the difference between cocky and strong, like definitely, yeah. The, I mean, the nice guys finish last is fairly valid <laughs> in the sports <laughs> sphere. It's you need to kind of go out there and be like, I'm going to kill my opponent today. Otherwise. The opponent will kill you. It's eat or be eaten in the sports world. So that's something you have to realize. I never, I didn't fully understand that concept until I moved abroad. I think Akshat, like from from whatever I know of him, lives by that line. The nice guy. <laughs> last? Yeah. So he goes out of his way not to be nice, or he doesn't mind being last. I don't think he, he minds being last because, like every time I say something to him, he's like, "Nice guys always finish last." And it's like, right. I haven't I mean, even done anything. <laughs> I don't think that's true in life, though. I think that's true in only places where in competitive situations. I think that's just my opinion. I don't know. I, there's a no, but, potential debate I mean, there. I don't know. You think about it in like a, in like a, you know, in a personal life kind of way, not professional, not tennis, not any other sport or not any other competition kind of way. But even if you look at it in a personal life, if you're too nice, you're just going to be walked all over, is what I feel. True. You will, yeah, I guess at some level you have to be able to stand up for yourself and say no or stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's, not, yeah, it's not that you should be mean outright, you know, have bad intentions yeah, yeah, towards other people. Enough. It's a different kind of nice guy, I guess. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But, I mean, so, so, but, so would you, if, if, if let's suppose you ever get, you know, like completely big, ignum, fame, fame, you're the next Rafael Nadal, then do you think you'll be the cocky kind or you'll be the humble kind? Like stick to the ground and, you know, respect everyone or the be mean to everyone or... I, just... I think the person, what you become is who you surround yourself with. And judging by the people I have around me, if I were to be that big, as big as Rafa, I feel like I would be very... I'd, I'd be put in my place with, with my family and the support system I have around me. They're very, like, nice, supportive and stuff like that. But they know when to be like, yo, you're being a bit of a four-letter <laughs> word. <laughs> so so I, I think that that's the key when you're up there. And Rafa has his support system who's very, very humbling. And they keep him, you know, on, on earth. Even when people are like, oh, my God, you're the best tennis player in the world. And, like, blah, blah, blah. And he's roaming the streets and getting recognized at every corner. He has his wife or girlfriend wife i don't know if they're married now i think they got married yeah he has his wife next to him like just kind of like keeping him humble so it's all about the people you have around you when you're up there so the people who kind of get lost i feel like they don't really have those those figures of mentors around them that are helping them through this fame and this kind of stuff Anna, so, so do you have a girlfriend keeping you humble or a wife <laughs> a wife at 20. <laughs> sure <laughs> Three wives. I've been divorced twice. <laughs> I I do have a girlfriend for a year now, a bit more than a year. She, I mean, my I don't know how to. My family is my my rock. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. That's. <laughs> I I don't know. I guess in a year you can't really tell what your girlfriend is kind of. I mean, a year is a long time, to be fair. It is many, a long many, time. Many relationships don't even go further than a month. So, I mean, is a true. year is like 12 times that. A year is definitely a lot longer than I would have expected from any relationship at 20. But, yeah, she definitely humbles me and stuff like that. But it's not, it's not like I'm at the place right now where my head can get over my... What's the, what's the phrase? I keep saying it, but I'm, I, I'm not finishing. My, when somebody's head gets over there, what is it? Uh, no, oh. somebody, uh, wait. Head over, over the, the ground? I think like, it's something like that. that. Head over his heels. No, that's really? not. Good. No, head over the ground, I think. I mean, no, when, wait, no. I don't know, I'm bad at English, 
so myself from village yeah. area so i don't know so much shivali so helps us with everything so head head over the ground head over the no i think i'm from yeah probably head in the clouds or something i don't head in the clouds maybe i don't know okay well that <laughs> <laughs> yeah we we go with the meaning is yeah that and uh, fair, fair point fair point so so we so when you keep moving from like spain to germany and from india to spain so doesn't it get hard to like maintain relationships and maintain friendships with people or connects that you made for sure so, like, how do you, how do you how do you keep up with that i think every well probably tennis player anybody in an individual sport is a little bit of a loner on some level so i'm definitely one it's it's where you have to be comfortable being on your own entirely for like weeks on end and not feel like you're getting lonely and stuff like that which is hard especially when you're traveling and you're staying in hotel rooms alone and then catching flights and for weeks on end you just kind of see one person at a time and the next week it's somebody com- a completely different crowd so you're kind of on your own fending for yourself so you kind of get used to that life and yeah it's pretty hard to keep friendships and relationships going while you know traveling so much being on your own all the time it's it's pretty uh, yeah it's, it's it's definitely challenging and most people keep in touch calling or texting and stuff like that but i am a very very bad texter i i i take sometimes days to reply there are a lot of people like me any of you guys like me yes there yeah. is okay i see what <laughs> thank you so it's it's hard when you don't see a person and you don't text them it's just like you completely lost that they're strangers to each other the next time you meet so but it's not something that i really think too much about cuz like i said i'm comfortable being on my own and it's not like a, it's not like i need friends can you get new relationships and friends and everything like wherever you go like in your german academy or in your tennis uh, in your spanish academy you yeah. like just it just shifts you kind of get used to the whole temporary friends vibe and they also yeah. understand when you meet you're just like hey what's up and you know you're going to be friends but at some point you're going to go your separate ways and never see each other again and you're both cool with that so you yeah, don't even fine. take it to them like online or something you definitely are in touch at least you cuz when you're together you're messaging on whatsapp instagram snapchat something you're in touch but for example in spain i was after 3 years i made a lot of really close friends and now i basically am in touch with one guy and like very very rarely yeah. so it's like a call every 2 months just to be like hey what's happening how's everything but with one person out of the 30 i was really close with while there so it's not really very regular keeping in touch thing like what you guys are doing haven't met and you're like completely <laughs> besties now that's highly respectable i mean that's like really really rare it's probably going to be super awkward when you do meet though at college not to like <laughs> make it weird Ooh, don't jinx yet i'm not yeah. yet. i kind of want to know how it turns out so let's have another teams meeting like when you guys meet so you can be like oh i never thought he or she yeah, was going to be yeah, like sure. this in re- in person yeah. we're going to call you together when we together yeah we like do you see the awkward that you just draw it in <laughs> so what if the vibe is like so bad in real life oh no oh no <laughs> let's, let's not let's not get that the vibe is going to be really great it's all going to be yeah so for now awesome. it's been great <laughs> behind a computer screen <laughs> yeah so it's fine you guys will be fine yeah that's fine because the worst part is that like even our college it's calling us in batches so i'm going to go first and then these two are going to come with oh, you yeah actually so no we are not going to go first your role number is not first it's number wise not letter wise oh, no. <laughs> sit back when is it opening january feb oh feb oh you still have decent amount of time 40 days yeah 40 days <laughs> It's like summer vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's winter for us precisely. Yeah. Hmm. So, so then after that we have the second sem, and then where we all meet finally. Oh, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, the vaccine is coming, hundred percent. Yeah, for India. For you, it's coming. We're in India. I, for us, I, it's... India is coming. Trust me. Bharat Biotech or whatever in a couple of weeks. they they're doing one in karnataka in bangalore actually which is uh, i don't remember the place where they're doing it but they're in phase 3 trials and i i can guarantee by like feb that going to start vaccinating bang bangalore people 
only if it works out well. That's true. If somebody just passes out and dies, then we got a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? The woman in, in the US who passed out? Yeah, uh, the no. Some UK side effects as well, no? The, the side effects in all the vaccines. But in the US, a nurse passed out. But apparently that was because of um, like just initial shock or like, I don't know. Yeah, probably. You can't <laughs> pass out from a vaccine, can you? Yeah, like, I don't know. Let's see. Hopefully it works. I said to pass out through a vaccine. Yeah. The world is skeptical right now. Everybody's like, I don't want to get it. Let other people get it. I'll get it in like two, three months. <laughs> Damn, yeah. I'm actually no, writing a song about the COVID vaccine. Goes back to normal soon. Sorry, sorry? I said fingers crossed everything goes back to normal. Fingers, and everything yeah. you know, back fine. It's about time. Yeah, but how are in like you just came back right i just came back germany is surprisingly open but they just went into another lockdown like the day i was flying out i didn't get to see how it was but uh but they basically the cases are like skyrocketing there and that uk i don't know if you heard about the more yeah, virus and the mutation yeah. right so they're suspecting some has come to uk uh, sorry germany from the uk so that could be the reason that, I mean, I've been reading so much, but you can't really tell what's real, what's fake in this news these days. So, but basically the, the cases are really high. So they finally had to go into the, another lockdown. A lot of protests and stuff happening. But but German lockdown is really weird because you see people outside at train stations and stuff. India lockdown, like there was nobody. Like cops were hitting people when you left yeah, your house and stuff. Wait, were you in India for like the lockdown? Yes, I was in India for five months from the beginning of the lockdown till August or so and then I went to Germany the last four months and when I thought that things were settling down but then they seem to have gotten worse <laughs> the European second surge happened as soon as I got there which was unfortunate timing how is lockdown for you like how did it impact everything for you I I mean obviously the same way I think it impacted everybody I was just Sitting at home, no tennis. I'm kind of fortunate to have a tennis court in my house, which is kind of lucky in Bangalore, yeah, in <laughs> my backyard. <laughs> yeah. So I was able to play and, and hit some serves. And then after the first lockdown was loosened up a bit, one of my friends was coming and we were practicing and stuff like that. So it wasn't too bad on me. I was volunteering with White, Whitefield Rising. I don't know if you know Shivali. It's, no, I've heard of it. It's an organization in, in Bangalore. They were providing rations for people who were stranded, like all these laborers and workers from Assam and Odisha and all these places. So I was helping out with them because I had free time and I wanted to help. So so just stuff like that, spending time with the family, never been at home for longer than three weeks before, like in the last eight years, uh, seven years maybe. The longest I was at home was like three, four weeks. And so this would have been good. Like, this was, yeah, this was crazy good. Like, like I mean, it was such a, so obviously it wasn't, good in the sense situation wise for the world yeah. but personally it wasn't the worst thing that could happen to me being at home that was yeah it's always catch up with your family after so long yeah and get that break from the constant travel and flights and turbulence so do you get like vacations after every tournament or like a little break like a two week I wish. break after, <laughs> after every <laughs> tournament would be the dream but there's this thing called the off season, which just happened. It happens at the end of every year, um, the first two weeks of December, basically, or basically whenever you want to start till about December 15th, which is when everybody trains super hard, takes the Christmas and the holidays off, which is basically the vacation, and goes and starts first week of Jan, trains a bit, and then second week of Jan starts tournaments. So every every player basically does this. So you kind of train like basically destroy yourself, your body three, four weeks, depending on how long you want to do it. Sometimes even two weeks if you go crazy all out. And then when you start in Jan, your body is like unbelievably fit. Your lungs have, I mean, three times the capacity it was before you started training so hard. So this off season is like a big, uh, is a big deal for every player. And then you take a vacation after that because your body needs some day, few days to recover. Mm -hmm. so, what is the best, like the most prestigious tournament that you've played? Oof. I played probably the Junior Davis Cup. I was, we won the one in, it was it was held in Delhi actually that year. So we kind of had home crowd support, which was nice. 
and so the Asia Oceania we came I think it was third so and we beat we came third we qualified basically after five years so it was a big deal like all these reporters and in the newspaper and all this stuff so it was it was it was nice representing India is always a prestigious kind of tournament to play. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, don't you represent yeah, but, India whenever yeah. you play a tournament? I mean at the international level your flag yes it shows India but it's not really it's an individual player from India. Oh this yeah. This was a team in kind of representing India as a team. So Davis Cup is basically the one tournament a year where it's country versus country. Because in an international tournament you could play another guy from India in the draw which would I don't know. Okay, so you you represent the country but you're playing for yourself in a way. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I mean, if you do well, the country does well, obviously, too. But at the end of the day, you, you might have to beat a fellow countryman to do well. And uh, no, uh, fine. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for being here. Thank you for blessing us with your presence. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Wow, that was very blessing you with my presence and all. Wow. <laughs> Calm down. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is actually really great. It was great knowing about tennis. I mean, I have never had so much knowledge about tennis. Ah, I'm glad I could bestow some knowledge upon you about tennis.